Hey there, thank you so much for joining me for another video. My name is Erin Eno and today I'm going to show you how to paint this winter landscape. It's so simple that any beginner can do. And if you do give it a try and you're on Instagram, please be sure to share your work and don't forget to tag me so I can check it out. So let's just grab our paints and get started. So before I get into painting, I'll just go through my materials for you. Today I'm using my Arsh cold press watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton, and I've trimmed it down to, I think it's uh, five by seven and a half ish. I have my Van Gogh paints. I have a jar of water and a paper towel, and I have four of my Princeton snap brushes, one in a size 12 round, one in a size uh, what have I got here? Four, two, and zero. I'm not sure what I'm going to be using there. I just wanted to have um, my small, small brushes on hand. And I will also be using my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. If you don't have this, you can use white gouache or white uh, acrylic even would probably work. I'm just going to use this to put the snow on the trees just to keep it simple. You could maybe even use a gel pen, I guess, as well. So, okay. Oh, and I have a reference photo. This one I got off of Pixabay. If you're ever looking for reference photo, it's um, an awesome website. You should check it out. And this was done by, the artist only has his name down as Pexels. So that's like pixels with an E. Um, so that's who I'm going to credit for that. And I'm not um, following it exactly. It's just a reference. I'm not going to hold myself to try to get it exactly, although it would be nice. Um, I'm also going to be using my heat tool just to speed things up. You don't need that. You can just like wait for it to dry. So the reason I wanted to do this landscape was I have a tendency to use um, a lot of colors and why wouldn't you when you have all these pretty colors so I just thought that this uh, picture here was really simple and I'm going to try to keep it down to uh, a minimum of colors I'm going to mix up a green I'm going to use sepia and probably some Payne's gray and that's it so um, I have a tendency to overdo it with the paint and I thought this would be a nice exercise in simplicity and restraint so we'll see how I do um, so I'm going to start, I'm not even going to draw anything first. We're just going to jump in and paint. Um, so, so I'm just going to take my sepia and water it down. Okay, so I'm going to first, with my sepia, I'm just going to get most of it off my brush. I just want a light wash. And I'm just going to draw in, draw, I'm not going to draw, I'm going to paint in the line that indicates this main hill coming down. Okay, so I'm just going to go like this all the way down. And it's really watered down. I mean, it fades off. So I'm just going to turn my board and just fade this all down. Down, fade it out. And this will dry lighter. But I just want it to fade off smoothly and I'm going to wet the whole background. Just like that. We're just keeping this very simple. Well, because it's a simple photo. That might even be too much. But I just wanted to establish that line. Maybe it can probably come down a little straighter and a little further here. And there's also trees in the distance, but they are cut off by this hill, so you don't see the base of them. So we're going to put those in as well. So just like that. And then I'm going to take more of that sepia and just kind of tap it in. You can barely see it, but there's almost like a, there's a mountain line, not lion, but there's a, a mountain line in the background. You can barely see it. It's almost faded out completely. 
So I'm just going to tap in the sepia along this hill top and more where that kind of mountain is that you can barely see. And I'm, like I say, I'm just using this photo as a reference. Okay, I'm not, I mean, I'm going to try to match it as best as I can, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to stress over it. I'm just going to try to get that mountain to show a little bit more just like that then I'm going to rinse off my brush and just fade it out because it just fades away to basically nothing okay so now that that's in place I'm going to just add a little bit of um, Payne's Gray to my sepia and get a very light wash of that as well. Okay, so it's just slightly grayer. And I'm going to take, I think my number six brush. No, sorry, I don't even have a number six, my number four brush. And I'm going to get this wash on there. And I'm just gonna add some texture to the snow. There's a little bit of texture you can see in here. and. I'm going to do that by taking my brush and just quickly just brushing it across the page. Whoops, sorry, I'm knocking my microphone. Just like that. And that will dry lighter as well. But you can hear it, it's almost like I'm basically dry brushing. But by doing that, you kind of pick up the texture of the paper and it just adds a little bit of texture to the snow so it's not so plain. Okay. So I'm going to dry this and make sure that this is like light enough. Okay so now that that's dry I'm going to take my number four brush and I've got a mixture of green here. I don't know if it's in frame or not and basically it's just sap green with some uh, carmine in it so it's pretty green and it's pretty dark but I want to make it even kind of browner and grayer so I'm going to add a little bit of sepia to that as well because the green in the trees is almost black it's that dark so I don't need it that dark for the trees in the background however but I do want it I don't know if I need Payne's Gray in this or not. Maybe not. Let's not. A little bit more green back in there. Okay, and I'm just going to get a light wash of that by taking most of the pigment off my brush. And I'm just going to go in and start adding some of these trees. I know the main tree is going to be about here. So I want to add a couple starting here and I'll just do them pretty light to start. And we can always add to it after it's dry if it dries too light. So I'd rather start off light. And you don't have to painstakingly try to make it look like a tree. Mine are already bigger than the ones in the picture, but that's okay. That's okay. I think this brush might be a little too big. I want to get an even smaller brush, so I'm going to get my number zero, actually. And again, just a light wash.
I want to make this more of a tree shape. It kind of went a little wonky on me. Well, I painted it wonky. And then I don't have to worry about the bottoms of the trees because they're all, um, as I mentioned before, they're all cut off by this snowy hill. And they're so far away that they just kind of look like little mounds. So there's another bunch here. And some down here. I think they're all evergreens. They're so far away I can't even tell in the picture. I think they are. They would have to be because they're pretty dense, so. There we go. And another little cluster of them here. And I will go and darken them up as well. Then there's some just in the far edge here. So now I'm going to go in, because of where there was hardly any water on there, they're going to dry quite quickly. So I'm going to go in with darker pigment, tap the excess off my brush, and just actually darken. I think these ones are okay. I'll probably darken the middle of this one just a little bit. Don't want them too dark. I want to keep them kind of soft to the outside edge. So I'm just adding darker pigment to the inside and it can bleed out towards the edges. So I'm just taking my brush and running it along the bottom to keep that sharp edge there. And then these trees probably went a little dark. So I'm just gonna lightly, very lightly tap with my paper towel just to get some of that pigment, soften it up a bit. And that's all I will do for those. Actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna go in with even darker. And just on these trees on the end, I'm just gonna tap in the middle, just to let that bleed up, just like that. I'm not trying to paint the trees in any shape, I'm just gonna let it bleed into the trees a bit, just to deepen them up in some spots. Even this one, I could probably just put a little more depth in there and there, and we'll leave that. Now, there is a little cluster of plant baby trees or something over there. So I'm going to take my, my um, dark greeny brown that I made with my number zero brush, and I'm just going to kind of stipple in a little baby tree over here. It's actually a couple of them, so I'll just do that coming up and then some branches coming out. And then it kind of gets buried in the snow. I didn't do this the best shape, but I think it's okay. And it does, they do have a little bit of snow on them too, so we can put some snow on them when they're done. And then because there's a little shadow there underneath these, this little clump, I'm just gonna wet my brush, clean it off, I'm just go in with a little bit of water and just touch the bottom of it like that. 
and just drag that out to create a little bit of a shadow. If it starts overtaking, you can just tap it up a little bit. Then I'm going to go in with my number four brush and we'll start painting the main tree with that dark green. I'm actually going to add a little bit of Payne's Gray to it, make it even darker. I don't know if that's in frame, but there, it's quite dark. And I don't know if my number four brush is going to be small enough. I'll see once I get into it, but I know I want to start the tip right about here. Okay. And I'm also going to draw a line up from where I want it to go. Not that you're going to see it and not that you're going to see the tree trunk, but it just helps me keep my branches in line. So I've got the top of the tree and I'm just going to do some little sprigs of pine coming off like that. And it's, this tree is kind of wonky, so it's really, um, you know, it's not a perfect Christmas tree shape, which is actually kind of neat. And don't forget, don't just do branches to the left and branches to the right, because there's branches in the middle. So you have to kind of fill that in as well. And you can almost see the little sprays of pine coming off that. It's quite, focus, quite in focus. So I'm just going to continue this. I've just dipped my brush in the water just to get it a little bit lighter on this side um, because this, the shadow of the tree is over here. The sun's coming from this way. So this side is a little bit lighter and I've probably done it a little darker than I should have, but that's okay. Okay, so I think that's all we need to do for the tree. So I'm going to go in with my size 12 brush and put the shadow in that starts from all underneath the tree here. So it's just kind of, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that quite yet. There's another baby tree there beside it and I'm going to do that one as well. I hope my number four is small enough to do this one. Just be very careful. So I'm just using the very tip of my brush now, which I'm not real good at, but we'll see how it goes. This should be a little lower than the other tree. And mine's kind of crooked, but I'm not going to sweat it. That's okay. I made it a little crooked. I do want it to come down a little bit lower. Okay, so now that will be good enough. So now I'm going to go in with my number 12 and I'm going to get this sepia again and I'm just going to put in a little bit of a shadow under here. I don't want to start off too dark. I'm just going to start with a little bit of it and it curves 
and then it makes a shadow under that little baby tree there. This brush holds a lot of water, so I just want to be careful with it. And I'm just going to dry it off my paper towel and just soften this edge up a bit, just like that. Okay, and I'll go back in and I'll put some under this bigger tree. I'm doing it light because I just don't want to um, have it too dark right from the start. And I do want it to have that little bit of that sepia color and not so gray in some areas. And then we can go in with the gray, Payne's gray. Whoa, that's a lot. I don't need all that. I just wanted a little wash of that and a little bit of the sepia just to warm it up a bit. And I'm just going to put it in here and bring it up to go along the line of the hill, just like that. And I'm going to make it a lot darker right underneath the tree. But for now, I just want to leave it like that. And then I'm going to clean off my brush, tap it off on my paper towel, and I'm just going to blend this out. Just like that. Just to soften it up a bit. Then I'm going to take the Payne's Grey and the sepia, get a little bit darker, and just start, whoops, tapping it in right under the tree because it's quite dark there. And then that shadow kind of fades off. So that, 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 bleh, so that will just bleed out where we've already got it wet. Okay. It does get quite dark in there. And I've made my shadow line a little wider than it probably should be, but that's okay. I'm just going to soften this up a bit as well. Just like that. I'm going to let that dry a bit and then I'm going to darken it up a bit more. I just don't want it to bleed out too much so I want to let it dry a little bit first and then we can put in the real deep shadows down there. There's also some footprints in the snow. I don't know if I want to put those in. Maybe I can give it a go and if I don't like it I can maybe pick them up. Why not, right? Let's see. Let's see. They're kind of not formed footprints. They're very subtle. So you can just basically put a couple of lines and dots in there. Well, I'm not doing them any particular shape. I'm just kind of putting them in there. And then they can kind of just fade off. So you can put them in if you want. It's totally up to you. I thought, why not? They're there. They don't need to look like real footprints, but they're there. I'm also going to go in while I'm at it and just darken up some of these trees in the very, very background here. And I'm not going right to the edge of my original tree. I'm just putting some pigment in the middle like that just to give it a little more depth and crisp up that line. Then I'm going to rinse off my brush, top it off my paper towel and just kind of blend that out a bit just so they're darker in the middle and kind of soft on the outer edge. And I'm going to go into the Payne's Gray and the sepia and go right under the base of the tree here where the shadows really close to the tree is going to be really heavy so that's still wet and it should bleed out and I'll probably um, coax it out with my brush a bit as well so there's a darker line here It's 
quite sharp there actually I'm gonna sharpen that edge up then I'm gonna rinse and dry off my brush and I'm just gonna fade it out along the, the top edge just like that And that goes right off the edge of the page. And it can be a little softer up here. And I'll blend it out here as well. A little more under this tree. Now I want to go in and make it really dark under here, but I don't want it to bleed too much. So I've got a lot of pigment on my brush and not a lot of water. And I'm just kind of tapping it in here just to make it really nice and deep under the tree. Actually, you know what? We could, I'll probably stand a little bit under this one as well. So I'm just kind of playing around till I get it the way I want. I can add a little bit more darkness to these little baby trees over here too. Just a little bit. I'm not even drawing a full line. I'm just tapping in some depth there, just like that. And I'm going to put that a bigger shadow, not bigger, but darker shadow under these guys too. And I will soften that up as well. Just like that. That ought to do it. And I am going to coax this out just a little bit. Okay. I don't want to play around anymore. I'm going to let that dry and then we'll put some snow on the tree. I'm using my size zero because I don't want to get carried away with this snow. I don't want to make it look, you know, too clunky. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that sepia just so it's not a really stark white. Um, I'm going to start over here because it's lighter on this side. And then I can tint it a little more to do the snow that's kind of in the shadow over there. So this is where you can put it in the middle and start to bring out branches in the middle. And they just, they kind of, they almost kind of come down like curved and then on the little fingers of pine like that. So you can draw a curve and then come down. Just like that, just so you're not just putting like clumps of, I'll show you up close. So there you can see how it's just kind of curved and then there's little lines of white that come down. So that's the look I wanna go for rather than just slapping on some white in any, you know, no particular order or fashion. And I think that's probably good for now. The plan was to do a painting that was an exercise in um, restraint. So that's what I wanna do. I do find that I probably did a little too much on this guy here. So I'm just gonna put some of the green 
that really deep green back in because it just uh, went a little too white on me. Okay, so now we will take the tape off and see how we did. And here is the finished landscape. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. It's such a simple piece, uses just a few colors. I guarantee any beginner can do this. If you did like this video, please be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more. That's it for today, guys. Take care and I'll see you soon.